This Ag Vision program is brought to you in part by Farms.com, your online resource. NK Brand Corn and Soybeans, more yield, better choices. If you're a farmer at the point of seriously considering the concept of a value chain, I think you'll find the pros and cons provided by the top manager team worthwhile. Here now is the team and their thoughts on value chains. Value chains provide a trade-off uh, from the standpoint of forming a relationship with a known market. That's a good thing because you're not worrying about where you're going to market your product. And if you have a, a good flexible marketing arrangement in place, you also have some security in knowing what your price is going to be. Some of the better ones I've seen is where they, the purchaser realizes that you are providing a value-added product and that's why they came to you versus somebody else and they're willing to pay you a premium. Unfortunately, in these value chains, the purchasers are always looking for the best deal and very quickly the value-added goes away when more than one person starts offering the same thing. So it challenges the provider to continually get better to prove that they still are a preferred supplier source. You may give up a little bit of profit that you might be able to achieve in certain situations where we get a windfall. For example, you might have locked yourself into a, a long-term pricing arrangement where you're locked out of this $4 corn or $5 wheat market. But you also bring with that the protection that when these prices go down, you are not locked into a situation where you, you're selling at below your cost of production. Another issue that comes up in these value chain arrangements, uh, particularly in the many years ago as more and more the poultry business and the hog business started moving to contracting, you, you basically take away the incentive to be an entrepreneur. You almost become a serf where everyone is just working for another entity sourcing product and all you're really being paid for is the services you provide. You're not really, there isn't as much incentive to innovate, to develop a more creative cost of production, and there isn't an incentive to go out and look at alternative markets which might give you a better price for your product. Value chains are a valid method to try and capture increased financial return from our crops or outputs. However, there are a few things that I continue to suggest uh, are important to consider. Number one, what are your switching costs? If we're going to be moving, it's almost certain that if we're moving to more specialized outputs that are focused on niche markets or niche products, uh, we're going to have switching costs. It's important for us to sit back and carefully weigh what it's going to cost us to meet that, um, to switch into those products. The second thing that I would suggest is important is that we pick our partners very carefully. We want partners that are going to be committed to us long term. If th there is indeed, our experience is that if there is indeed value in a, in, a, in a niche, in a value chain niche, that invariably more and more competitors, other farmers, other producers will want to enter that, uh, that chain. You want to have a partner, you want to have partners that are going to be committed to you or to uh, the, the downstream members and continue to share that equity or that extra rent that they're acquiring from the niche with, to you and will not as increased people, as more people, more farmers come to them to take part, water down the share of the value that's passed down to producers. Thirdly, it's important to consider if this is a defensible value chain. If you have a partner that has uh, discovered a particularly attractive output, for instance, for which your end user is ready to pay, but it is a niche that can easily be entered into by other producers or other partners or other chains or other groups, uh, what they, they, competitive markets are going to do what they always do. You'll find competitors coming in, price will go down, and eventually this itself, your value chain will become, your product, the product goes down the value chain, it's going to become a commodity, just like any other uh, market uh, does in the life cycle of any other market. I think my very first question is, how is that value chain set up in terms of the fairness of the pricing mechanism and the transparency that's going on within it? And my, my definition, or my, I guess let me say it this way, I always think of, of value chains when they're successful as really good strategic alliances between people in various places in the, in the value chain. 
And my definition of a, of a, of a strategic alliance always has the word mutuality all the way through it. You have, you know, we need each other, we, we mutually need each other for whatever the end use is. We mutually respect each other, we are making decisions mutually about the operations, and we share the risk and the rewards. And if that mutuality isn't there, then that means that the, there's not very much of a balance of power. And I like, and I like to make, sh I like to see them set up in such a way that there is a lot of mutuality. People do have some impact on the decisions, and they understand how the decisions get made, especially about things like pricing. Otherwise, if you're doing, if you're doing a value chain, you're doing it for one of two reasons. You're trying to differentiate so that and and the the end use product and you should be paid for whatever contribution you make to the differentiation and you got to be you got to be you got to be sure that you re, that you're rewarded fairly or you're setting it up to in, to reduce transactions costs and again you need to be you need to be rewarded for your part in reducing those transactions costs either way you need to make sure that you feel clear about whether the reward is correct or not and whether the pricing mechanism is 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 fair in getting back to you what what you deserve and so those are the that, that causes me to say those are the things that you need to 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 worry about transparency and the mutuality issues that i talked about they're a very good idea. Uh, supply chains are the way of the future, and we've certainly seen that in other countries. Um, Canada and Canadian farmers have been a little bit slower in the uptake of getting involved in the informal supply chains, but it is the way of the future. But there are some it isn't an easy thing to get into as you mentioned it could take a couple of years but it can happen faster but there's management skills that a farm family needs to have in order to get involved in in the supply chains that they don't typically think about and the key one is communication and negotiation skills and often the primary farmer in a family farm operation has uh, has got a history or really is in farming because of the uh, the appeal to production and there's maybe less appeal to marketing and maybe not much appeal at all to interpersonal communications and detailed negotiations so where we've um, where we found examples of, of families that have got into supply chain management often the the spouse or the woman uh, of the of the family farm unit is much better at interpersonal skills and negotiations and often that's a role uh, a, a woman a, a, a wife or a daughter will take in the operation because they're for whatever reason intuitively better intuitively better at the communication process but that's the key aspect of um, getting involved in supply chains is communication negotiation really understanding where the win-win is and be being prepared to work in mutual trust with the other partners in the supply chain so you have to be open to share the risk and share the opportunities and it requires excellent interpersonal communication skills